The first V2 to land in the UK landed here within a matter of a few minutes of being launched in a suburb of The Hague. It penetrated a new concrete roadway and exploded. It demolished numbers one to five in this road. Part of the explosion was dissipated by the fact that next door was a school with playing fields. It wrecked a large number of other houses, some of them quite a distance because there was an aftershock. This was a supersonic rocket. This would have broken the sound barrier and that's the first noise anybody would have heard. There was a second explosion only a few minutes after this one where the second V2 landed in Epping Forest. But this one killed three people and injured a number. Um, so this was the most serious. There was quite a conspiracy around what had actually happened here at the time, wasn't there? The government very quickly swung into action and said it was a gas main explosion because they didn't want to encourage the Germans by saying, yes, you've actually made your V2 reach the UK. They slightly gave it away, though, because the Home Secretary and an MP, Ellen Wilkinson, actually came to the site that night. So they knew something serious had happened. You've done quite a lot of work collecting personal memories from the time. Can you tell me about what you found? When we did the V2 memorial, I was the coordinator of the project for the Battlefields Trust and the Brentford Chiswick Local History Society. We started to get people who didn't live in Chiswick anymore getting in touch with memories. And because it was 60 years after the event, most of the people getting in touch were in fact people who'd been teenagers in 1944. And the great game was, after a big bang, you leapt on your bike, you found your friends and you came to gather shrapnel. And there was even a man on the night that we unveiled the memorial who brought his matchbox of pieces. And he could tell us which was from the nose cone and which was from the body and which was from the fins, in his opinion, as a little boy in 1944, from, from the V2. The V2 landed here in 1944, but Britain had already experienced the period of the Blitz in 1940 and the eight-month period that followed. You hear a lot about um, bombs being dropped in the East End and on the docks, but Chiswick was quite badly affected too, wasn't it? Not as badly affected as some places. The suburbs tended to get a random scatter of bombs where they're just losing the last few before they return to Germany. But um, there's been a, a new map, there's a project called Bombsite, which is on the web where they've actually put the Blitz bombs uh, for Greater London as little red dots on a map. And it's very clear that, apart from the random scatter in those months of the Blitz, the main focus of bombing is opposite the north side of the road, opposite Gunnersbury Station, which then was a huge bus garage with a works, engineering works and so on, and was probably involved in war work during that period. And north of there, up to Acton, was a huge industrial site. Still is, but a lot of it's London transport. And the number of red dots there is very focused. The Germans knew that was a spot that they, they could hit. During the wartime period, what would have been like in Chiswick? Well, a lot of the men had gone, obviously, to serve in the forces. Um, and it's quite interesting how people kept in touch. The letters that uh, the vicar's wife wrote um, to a young refugee who'd been living with them for a while before he was interned as a, an enemy alien, she wrote to him for about five years. And her letters to him, he kept. And there is now a, a book um, illustrated by Anthea Craigmile, which shows a complete narrative of, of what was happening because she wrote these chatty letters. Um, she mentions um, having to cook over the open fire with candlelight because they'd lost electricity and gas as a result of a, a blitz um, raid. Um, she mentions the problems of people being bombed out of their house and she was trying to help people out staying in, in the vicarage. There's a wonderful sketch that Anthea Cravemar has done for the book of a group of women looking at a small oval thing on a table and the caption is, members of the Mother's Union admiring a lemon about to be raffled for the Red Cross. We, we had a lot of food shortages, various sorts, anything exotic and imported. But then we found in the local studies library handbills promoting people digging for victory, growing vegetables in their gardens and that sort of thing. And there was a lot of fundraising, huge amount of fundraising, often with entertainment. And the entertainment was designed really to keep morale up as well as to get people involved. They were raising money for warships and spitfires and so on. <laughs>